Okay, 1.7, day 2. Inverse functions and restricted domains of inverse functions. And before we start that, let's look at what um, our last example from the previous lesson. And I wanted to talk about why this is important. So, let's look at the graph of f and g. All right. So this is the graph of G, and G is the one that they restricted the domain for, uh, and that's the graph of F. And if they are going to be inverses of each other, then they have to reflect across this line. Uh, this part of G does not reflect over there. It doesn't show up, and that's why in order for G and F to be inverses, they have to say that G is only defined on X greater than or equal to zero, and that would mean um, even though the graph of G is this, we're only going to keep that part because that is the reflection of that. Okay, and we're going to do similar things today. We talked about this yesterday, and here's F. And then to find the inverse, we would just switch the X and the Y. All right, the original function is the square root shifted to the left one, and then the inverse is a parabola shifted down one, and these are not reflections of each other. Let's look at the domain of the function. Domain starts at negative 1 and goes to infinity. The range starts at 0 and goes to infinity. And over here, the domain and the range. The domain of this graph is all real numbers, but if we're going to have an inverse function, then we have to restrict the domain, and we would want to get rid of that. The range of the function has to be the domain of its inverse. Just like we switch the x and the y, now we switch the y of the uh, the y of the function becomes the x of the inverse. The x of the function becomes the y of the inverse and this is when uh, this is called restricting the domain of the inverse to make it a function 
So, reviewing la the last lesson, uh, we know that a function has an inverse function. It, a function has an inverse function if it's one-to-one. -one. So if we look at the graph of this and it passes the horizontal line test, then we know there's an inverse function. So let's graph it. Let's look for the x-intercept. I'll show the work. This equals 0, or this equals 0, so x equals 0, or x equals 2. Um, we know the graph is going up to the right, so it's going to go like this and it will fail the horizontal line test so it is not one to one no inverse function We already know the graph of this. So that passes the horizontal line test. It is one to one. So we have the function. and the inverse. The graph of the inverse is a parabola and the graph of the function So we only want this part of the graph, and to be sure uh, of the part that we want, let's talk about the domain and the range. The domain of this starts at negative 8, goes to infinity, and the range starts at 0, and goes to infinity. And that means we need to have the domain of this be the range of that the range of the inverse will be that. Uh, this range matches here. We're starting at negative 8 and going to infinity. And starting from 0 to infinity, we want to have that part of it. So we can say that the inverse function is All right, you try these, pause the video, and then uh, check your work when you're done. Okay, let's check to see if this has an inverse function. And it's um, absolute value. They got shifted to the right. 
and we can see it uh, is not one to one because it fails the horizontal line test so its inverse is not a function all right check the graph of this this is at one and it has a an asymptote at zero looks like this and it passes the horizontal line test so we'll have the function and the inverse switch the x and the y And this is a little unusual. Solving for y, we have two different y's. Um, just multiply both sides by y. Get the y's on one side, and then we can factor out a y. So if y times x is xy, y times negative 1 is negative y. So we know that that's correct. And then we can get y by itself. And. let's look at the domain of the inverse we have the domain of the function the domain of the function is all real numbers except for zero and the range is all real numbers except for one and that means that the domain of the inverse function has to be the same as the range of the function Two down two, and then we'll go four down one. And that's f of x. So this is at one zero and then two one two one four two and one half negative one all right so uh, 
we know there's a relationship between a function and its inverse, and they should the graph should reflect across the line y equals x. Um, so here's a, the long way to do it. Just write down the coordinates of this graph. 0, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 1. And then we'll write down, just switch those for the coordinates of the inverse function. And when we graph those, we'll see the symmetry. So there's the function. And then we'll graph the inverse. And that these are symmetric to the line y equals x. So there's the function, and this is the inverse function. All right, you try that one. Pause the video, try it, and then check your work. And we just switch the uh, coordinates. <clears throat> F uh, G of X and then we'll graph the inverse at negative one up one half let's go zero up one one two and two four so that's symmetric to y equals x it's the inverse and a review of, you saw this in Algebra 2, this is log base 2 of x, and this is 2 to the x. Exponential and logarithmic, so they are inverses of each other. Okay, and that's it for today.